React and React Native. What is the difference? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go through it with you. So let's get started. React is a library for building and creating websites and mobile apps, user interfaces. So the React library allows you to build the cleanest and fastest and most reliable websites and mobile apps using this library. And I'm gonna go through it in depth and detail. In this video, I'm not gonna actually show you a lot of examples of React, I'll do that in the next, but this is just a slideshow of the differences. Oh, well, there isn't a, a lot of differences because React and React Native are actually the same thing. It's just the syntax is different for that, right? The library remains the same. So fundamentals, what is React and React Native designed for? So like I said, React is for web development and React Native is for building and creating mobile apps, iPhone apps, Android apps, okay? So the cool thing about React Native is that you can actually take your JavaScript skills that you've learned from web development with React and actually apply that into React Native for building iPhone apps, like mobile apps, okay? What React Native actually does, it actually compiles that code to Swift and Kotlin for Android and iOS, okay? So Swift for iOS, Kotlin for Android, and it will create a, like a, another set, as it compiles, it will create like another set and actually compile this code to actually work on that mobile device. It has this cross-platform flexibility, allowing you to not actually, not having to learn Swift and Android, Studio and Java, right? Take your JavaScript skills from web development and build apps with it. So the APIs is used in both frameworks. Rendering, so React renders content on the browser and React Native renders to native mobile components, right? Like Swift and uh, Kotlin components. The reason why it's the best thing to learn React over other frameworks is because number one, popularity, right? Means a large community to support this library. And if there's a problem, the other software engineers, other you know professionals, expert developers out there will get onto the case and actually fix anything that is wrong with the library. Or not just that, there's other developers out there who have created really cool libraries and tools that you can use when you build web applications and mobile apps. That could be UI libraries to make the UI components look cooler, make it more flexible, adaptable, include uh, usability heuristics. This is actually what React kind of looks like, right? So this is React code. This is actually Next.js. I won't talk about Next.js, but what I want to talk about is that this is kind of like how the component structure, I mean, the folder structure kind of looks, and this is what the React code looks like. On top of every file, you import the React library. For example, you use this hook. This is what you call a hook. Use effect from React, the React library, right, within your code, and this will help you write, uh, obviously, work with React code. So basically, what even is that? Well, you can see down here where it says return, and then you've got HTML code, and you're probably thinking, wait, I can write, write HTML and a JavaScript file? Yes, you can, only with React, only with React the library, right? You can't do this in vanilla. You can't write JSX um, in pure vanilla, right? You can't write HTML in a JavaScript file when you code vanilla JavaScript, right? The way that you'll probably do that in vanilla is to do uh, inner HTML method where you import that HTML code within the, while well, it renders, right? The inner HTML method. Uh, but you won't do that in this case because React was developed to write HTML code within a JavaScript file, allowing you to structure your components and use it in a wide range of applications. So like I said before, with React, you can build websites and mobile apps with React Native. So like I said prior, React allows you to use, uh, have reusable components, meaning you can write a component once. So for example, the like a card component that you click on, or maybe a button, right? You can reuse that button anywhere in your web application. It's open source, meaning it's maintained by other developers in, within the community of React. So React, the React ecosystem, the React library is very widely known and used. It's ease of use, which means it's a breeze to work with because of its its ecosystem and the amount of libraries there is to support this library. The amount of libraries that you can import and use within this React library is amazing. And like I said, developer tools, right? Now, JavaScript has, it works with ES6, which is the latest version of JavaScript. I believe so. And uh, I think JavaScript updated, I'm not sure, but you know, in the future, JavaScript will update, but 
this is what it works with. And uh, I just want to quickly talk about uh, Airbnb. And the reason why I want to do that is because I was actually doing some research and online and I actually came across a presentation. I don't know if it was from Airbnb, maybe it was. They actually highlighted their technology their technology stack and what they improved on. So Airbed and Breakfast, so this is actually what it used to look like. And that is on the right, you can see that's what they developed with. And that's, this was in 2009. So they were using Ruby on Rails, probably for the front end, MySQL for the back end, uh, vanilla CSS, right, and prototype JS. This is what it looks like in 2012. So again, they, they're still using Rails. They've got MySQL, Postgres database that they are probably using as well. And you've got SAS, which is an improvement of CSS. It just adds on to CSS. You can do a lot of things, right? And Java. In 2015, they updated. And what can you see? They use React. And by the way, they also use Node.js as well. So they hit this brick wall where they couldn't do some things. They switched over to React. React makes it easier to build and maintain stateful UI components. React makes it easier to reason about data flow in your app. So learning React in 2024 is a smart choice because number one, it's high demand, it's component-based architecture, it's rich ecosystem, performance, and learning curve. So what, what do I mean by high demand? Well, there's actually a lot of uh, companies and job opportunities out there that are actually using React. And React is, has a very wide ecosystem of numerous tools, libraries, and community support, which helps you as a developer accelerate your development experience within this field of web development or mobile app development. I like to say a lot on my, on my YouTube to learn to master one instead of mastering many. And what do I mean by this? I mean, it's good to master one thing, get really good at it, instead of trying to learn so many things, like learn an, a, another programming language without actually finishing or actually working with the one that you you must work with, the one that you want to work with, the one that will actually you will bring value to. You know, when you create stuff, when you build projects, when you build stuff with it. So there's a wide ecosystem of tools and libraries and community support, and also there's this thing called the virtual DOM, virtual document object model, which ensures fast, efficient updates and smooth user experiences, smooth user experience on a website and mobile apps. Okay. So this is really good, right? And React is easy to pick up if you're familiar with JavaScript. That's why React is at high demand right now, right? And honestly, there's a lot of more videos and stuff and guides out there, um, more about React than a lot of other new frameworks which come out, which haven't been tested or maintained well enough. Right, so this is why I suggest beginners to start with React and then if they don't like it, switch on to something else. I don't think you will switch because this is a very, very um, adaptable and actually fun framework to work with. I mean, library to work with when you build stuff like web applications and mobile apps, right? To solve a problem or do something with it. So where can I practice these skills, Declan? Right, so here's some websites which you can practice your skills on to improve your web development skills, right? And mobile development skills. So Frontend Mentor is a web platform which allows you to pick a project and you know, you submit it to get feedback. So they have a lot of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript challenges, right? They give you a design, you build the project, and you submit it, and you get feedback from other developers within the community, and they actually help you and tell you this is how you can improve your code, and it helps you become a better developer. So for example, this job is this job listing or filtering thing. You can build this in React and still publish it, and you know, get feedback or whatever. You have to learn how to use the filtering method in order to filter a certain job query or whatever this this app application is you click view challenge it's an intermediate challenge you click view challenge and by the way you can actually click filter by and select easy you know hard intermediate whatever and uh, you build websites you publish it on github you upload it and you uh, other developers can see that right and you improve your it's like a portfolio right and oh, by the way you can also use this as a portfolio here's another website like a banking website easy bank landing page build that website get feedback improve your code you know grow as a developer never give up obviously this is what i like to tell people a lot is that you know you might go through imposter syndrome, but you know, what you got to do is, is just know that you will improve over time and you, you, you know, you will get good at, if you stick to one thing, you'll get good at it. If you stick to JavaScript and you just do react and all that, and you get really good at it, you know, you stick with it 
for a very long time, you'll probably be ahead of everyone else instead of trying to learn so many things. If you're ever curious on, okay, well that's web development. How can I improve my skills on React Native? Well, there's React Native projects, right? So you've got a car booking app, you've got e-commerce apps, you've got a news app, chat app, notes app, and you can even build, if you really want to, build an Instagram clone just to practice your skills, right? And you can just put it on GitHub, right? And uh, oh yeah, also put it on YouTube to show what you've got. And this is what, it looks like for React Native. You can see it, it's very, it's basically similar. It's very similar. You can see import React, the React library, and you've got the hooks here. You've got the function, right? You've got all this. This is where you write your code. You can see there's a lot of difference here. It uses a view component. You know, it's not HTML components, but it acts like that. It makes it easier for web developers to build mobile apps as well. Those are the differences. So build an app that solves a problem, man. Build an app that solves a problem, right? And um, I think you'll soon realize that you will improve as a developer. Developer. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and follow for more and I'll see you in the next.